Hello, it's Katie here from One Church in Dover. I've been thinking again this week about the word but and also remembering back to my childhood, maybe more particularly to my teenage years, where I always had to have the last word or at least think I had the last word. So if I was ever discussing anything with my parents, and uh, the conversation maybe hadn't ended in the way I wanted. As I left the room, either going upstairs to my bedroom or another room, I would try and get some more sentences in. I'd try and have the last word. Wonder who has the last word in your house? Funnily enough, the Bible says you reap what you sow, and I now have a delightful four-year-old granddaughter, but she does like to say, but nanny. She definitely likes the last word. So I was looking in Acts chapter 10, where here God has the last word. A bit of background to what's happening. Cornelius, uh, a Gentile, somebody who's not a Jew, has asked for Simon Peter, the Apostle Peter, to come to his house. And he sent off some of his servants to go and ask Peter to come. And whilst they're en route, Peter has a vision, a dream. He believes God is talking to him um, as he's on top of a house one day. And he doesn't understand the dream about being able to eat what the Jews would consider unclean animals. So the servants arrive and uh, Peter goes with them. And as he gets to Cornelius's house, I'll just read for you from verse 27 of Acts 10. Talking with him, Peter went inside and found a large gathering of people. He said to them, you are well aware that it's against our law for a Jew to associate with a Gentile or visit him. Peter shouldn't be there. Jews don't associate with Gentiles. These people shouldn't know the story of Jesus. However, it goes on to say, but, but God has shown me that I should not call any man impure or unclean. So when I was sent for, I came without raising any objection. May I ask why you sent for me? So here we have Peter. God's already prepared him. Peter and the other Jewish disciples probably had plans about sharing the good news of Jesus, probably had preconceptions about this good news was only for the Jews. But God had a different idea. God spoke. God had a different plan. And it wiped out that sentence before, that sentence that I shouldn't be here, shouldn't be able to tell you about the good news of Jesus. So I'll ask you again, who has the last word in your house? Do you listen to the but from God? For him to change your thinking, change your plans, change your preconceptions, change even traditions and things you've always done. I really want to encourage us this week to hear from God and be prepared to let him have the last word. Why do I really want us to do that? Well, if you go on and read the rest of chapter 10 for yourself. Peter is able to explain to these groups of Gentiles, these non-Jews, the story and good news of Jesus. They're filled with the Holy Spirit and signs follow that. And then Peter says, these guys need to be baptised. And without Peter listening to God, would we as non-Jews be following Jesus today? So make sure you're open to hearing the but, but from God, but this is my plan, this is my thought. See you again soon. Bye.